We will try to understand these processes by one case study. In 2003, Hindalco was an upstream player in commoditized industry. It made uh, aluminum, so its profit varied over time. We all know that uh, in a commodity market, the price fluctuation happens much uh, faster and that fluctuation has an adverse impact on the forecasting and the profitability both of these organizations. So, it decided to add downstream operations as well. Downstream meaning converting aluminum into the aluminum products. So, to its portfolio to steady the profit stream and reduce its dependence on the commoditized business. If commoditized market, if the commodity market has more fluctuation, consumer market has less fluctuation or a lesser fluctuation. Uh, in the pricing. So, in order to cushion against the fluctuating commodity market, Hindalco decided to include organically or by acquiring the downstream operations as well. That is converting aluminum into the products like foil, can etcetera. So, to that end, it acquired the two leading downstream companies in the aluminum industry. They acquired Indel in India and Novalis in North America. So, this case study and the learnings arising out of that are taken from the article of uh, Professor Nirmalya Kumar on how emerging giants are writing the rules of the MA published in the Harvard Business Review. After acquiring Novalis, Hindalco prioritized its integration task. So, the first thing was financial integration. Hindalco quickly aligned the two companies financial reporting periods. It consolidated the quarterly results and ensured that both entities met the regulators guidelines. That was the first thing they did and which is called financial integration. The second integration this uh, in this M&A Hind Hindalco did was organizational integration. It kept Novalis people in all top management jobs there and sent just two of its own executives, a risk management and one a logistics expert to Novalis to help improve its global supply chain. So, th this was initially the acquisition at the arm's length we have just discussed the meaning of the arm's length acquisition versus full integrated acquisition. In the Hindalco Novalis case, Hindalco after acquiring Novalis decided not to interfere much in the day to day functioning of Novalis and that is why they did not send out the dozens of executives to manage and head their departments. They sent out only two people who were supposed to help Novalis to strengthen its uh, supply chain and look at the risk management when they make a business decision. Third stage in this acquisition was business process integration. Means there are processes about marketing, operations, quality, logistics and many many other things. So, one example how they have done the business process integration, Hindalco established a company in India to handle Novalis IT system. So, they started a company which was catering to the IT requirements or only of the Novalis and in this way they leveraged the availability of the inexpensive engineers in India and they set up a in house IT support system for Novalis almost as an independent entity. This is one example of how business process integration can result into. In fact, it also resulted into shutting down some plants, clubbing some of the projects, so that the upstream business and downstream business can remain integrated. Then comes the uh, stage of the market integration. 
Hindalgo projected that India's demand for aluminum product would double from 2007 to 2012 and it actually happened almost happened. Half of the increase would be for the flat rolled products Novalis produces. It planned for India to absorb one third of Novalis output in three years. It also supplies aluminum can manufacturers in India with the flat rolled aluminiums for from Novalis plant in the South Korea. When volumes increase, it will set up a flat rolled aluminum plant in India. So, this is one example how the market for the Novalis and Hindalco were integrated. We need to look at another very important aspect of MA and particularly in the case of Hindalco. We should not think that Hindalco acquired this Novalis and this happened without any prior experience. It was not so. And in fact, some research studies suggest that prior experience of m and build the capability to carry out the m and process more effectively. So, if we look at this graph, we will see that uh, acquisition of the various aluminum companies have been the way of functioning or an organic growth for Hindalco since 2000. Novalis itself is a organization which is even bigger than Hindalco, but they were successful in acquiring that organization. We should not think that it was the first acquisition of Hindalco and they became successful. If we look at the track record of Hindalco for last 20 years, we will see that the first acquisition in the aluminum sector done by Hindalco was of Anpuna file. They learned in the process about how to bid, how to negotiate, how to integrate the companies in India. Through this acquisition, they learned how to turn around a small Indian company in a receivership. Then they acquired Niti and Mount Gordon in uh, 2003. These are the Australian firms. And this acquisition helped the Indalco learn how to take over, turn around and operate companies in the developed countries. It also taught Hindalco how to list the companies on the stock exchange abroad and manage the investors relationship. We all know that dynamics of the investors relationship and uh, shareholders, small and big shareholders are different in different kind of markets. So, uh, in the by acquiring the companies in Australia, Hindalco learned th about these dynamics in the developed market. Then in 2005, they acquired a pulp mill in Canada. This acquisition helped the organization to learn how to manage a global supply chain as a buyer and as a seller. So, they were able to learn how to manage the price fluctuation and the foreign exchange risk across countries. In 2006, they acquired another company in Canada and in 2007, this famous Novalis acquisition took place. They learned the how to acquire, assimilate the and delist the companies in North America and they also learned how to manage a large HR incentive, HR intensive multinational operations. So, we can see that the learning capability of successful m and is being acquired by Hindalco by a small and medium size acquisitions before they went for really large size m and now, what is the situation, current financial situation? This acquisition is generally considered successful. Both organizations acquired new markets for their products and Novalis in fact, very recently in the recent quarter provided a bright spark with the EBITDA rising 5 percent to 374 million. It is higher ever as the North American operations performed very well. So, volumes of the Novalis also increased uh, 
by 3 percent. On a standalone versus Hindalco including Utkal Alumina which is the recent acquired suffered a 77 percent fall in the net profit to rupees 167 crore into the exceptional loss of 31 crore. But this uh, the, the performance of the Novalis actually provided the cushion to the Hindalco. So, we can say that it has been a successful acquisition both organizations were able to access the new market, they were able to integrate lot of their business processes and market share though initially the share price went down which generally happens immediately after any merger and acquisition the share price of the Hintalco went up and currently it is hovering at the 200 rupees level. So, currently the, uh, the share of the Hindalco is being traded at 200 rupees. We need to understand that m and a is a complicated job. So, natural question was should organization do a small m and a should organization acquire or merge smaller entities or more number of small entities or they should look for a big size merger and acquisition to be successful and to, uh, to be profitable. So, the question is should organization merge or acquire a smaller entities in larger number or they should merge or acquire a large entity in a singular or in a limited number to attain the business success. Research says that companies that regularly and systematically pursue moderately size M and A deliver better shareholder returns than companies that do not. So, the key lessons of this session about the stages of M and A are as follows. We need to understand that M and A requires involvement and activities at several fronts and it is useful to prioritize these activities in the form of financial integration organizational integration, business process integration and market integration. Most of the time m &A decisions are driven by strategic logic. Strategic logic generally do not get translated into the business logic or profitability scenario. That is why large number of m and probably more than 50 percent of the m and they do not realize the potential which is thought to be at the planning stage of the m &A. So, key thing is that after the strategic logic, after making the strategic vision, after establishing the competitive advantage reasoning, organizations have to do the financial integration first for the m and to be successful. Along with that they need to start the organizational integration. Business process integration is the key thing through which a cost saving promises can be realized and then comes the market integration. Market different stakeholders and the customers must be getting the non confusing signals and so that their trust in the organization should increase rather than decrease after m and field of OD and OD practitioner can play very important role in all these stages. We looked at how OD practitioner and the field of OD can be so helpful in the pre combination stage. If we look at these four aspect of the integration as articulated by Professor Nirmali Kumar, OD practitioner can be extremely helpful and the field of OD can be extremely useful in the organizational integration. Nonetheless, the field of OD can be useful in the business process integration as well. By facilitating the management teams of the acquiring and acquired entities, they can indirectly influence the market integration as well. OD in m &A situation can use D various types of intervention which we have studied in the course thus far. We if you remember 
we studied individual level intervention, team level intervention and strategic intervention, organizational level intervention. In the m &A, OD practitioners have to use individual level intervention for the leaders to articulate their strategy and vision for the MNA. OD can help in the group level intervention by identifying by helping the management to create the MNA team, make the team function well, facilitating that team to be effective in their role. So, OD practitioners in this way can help a great deal in facilitating various teams to be effective in their role. OD practitioners and the field of OD can be extremely useful and cultural due diligence and talent due diligence. They can also be helpful in uh, overseeing the OD intervention and identifying the right assessment and criteria to, to track the success of m and &E process.